ceramics. I'm not like a ceramics person in general. I just have a really great appreciation for it. But the way we've made our studio, it is sort of like a, a breeding ground for ideas. And I'm, I'm, I get to test things and sort of spread them around among people here. Uh, and um, I, have a, I have a couple of people, Henry, who's actually on that photo, uh, and Roan both sort of take my ideas and, and really transform them. So my approach is, is actually that I get to uh, sort of, I get to experience ceramics and look at them and have ideas about them. And, uh, and I'm coming at it from a very, um, an uninformed place with a lot of curiosity. And that's how I, I sort of operate with most of the stuff. Uh, and then Nikki will draw these shapes and, uh, and we apply a lot of my materials to them or my materials explorations, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I've always been uh, intrigued by how your studio, uh, the, the collaborative sort of energy that you guys have, which is, is so, um, I think, unusual in a way that the whole concept of, of how you've developed bodies of work in conjunction with your team and, and sort of like the uh, sharing in a way like of, of ideas. Um, this is a very early slide of some of the first accretions that we'll come back to uh, in a minute. Lee, maybe you can talk a little bit about your studio. I think we have an image of your studio as well. And also another thing is the two, both the uh, the Haas brothers and, and Lee, both of you guys have some of the most beautiful studios that I've ever had the opportunity to <laughs> visit. Um, but tell us a little bit about your studio, Lee. This is an amazing space. Yeah, I mean, just uh, for me, just I started art from, from the ceramic. And when I started to make a ceramic, I just worked by myself. I just designed by myself and I finished my, by myself. That was the beginning of the time. So I really enjoyed it for the beginning, but these days I'm very similar with the Simon. I'm, I have uh, my co-workers, and uh, as you know, just I make a ceramic and also the uh, I use the other materials. I need uh, some assistance, like I hire sometimes carpenter as a part time, the welder, and also I have uh, ceramic assistants. So these days I like. Uh, but when, if I say just when I begin to make a ceramic by myself, it, it was like uh, playing guitar, like solo guitar playing. I just uh, enjoyed by myself. But these days I try to make uh, some, make, set up some kind of just system, like uh, make a harmony. So which is a very similar way of designing architectural thing. So which I try to do more because uh, I need to make a bigger, bigger size and more like technical work. So, which is uh, I'm really into right now. So, yeah, that's uh, what I do. And um, yeah, I love I love that. Mm. And you were also trained in, in architecture, and I know you yeah. <laughs> designed your studio. Is that right? Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing. If you go back one slide, you'll see that space. Um, is uh is a beautiful space and just an hour or so outside of seoul south korea and um and you live there nearby the studio isn't that right yeah so mm -hmm. i think did you yeah you you designed the space is what i was saying and you live nearby yeah i mean that was uh, maybe almost 15 years before i designed my studio and house and also I just actually I built <laughs> so that was uh, before I studied uh, studied architecture I think uh, why I study architecture is um, I mean making ceramic is uh, very very meditative and uh, which is uh, I told you just when I started to make ceramics I I enjoyed the whole process but I was really curious about the other way of making art, which is about using system. Like in, I was uh, thinking about studying architecture or making film, but I choose architecture because I'm a visual artist. I like to feel the material 
That's yeah. why I use the concrete, the kind of material. So, which is very different, making art alone or just making art mm -hmm. using system, which is very different way of thinking or, yeah, yeah, different process. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a very interesting um, mm -hmm. a base to build on as, as an artist. And Simon, uh, you also study architecture. I don't know. I mean, like, just uh, yeah, making like a ceramic is a more intuitive way of making. But when you design or designing things, it's like uh, more, I mean, you have to communicate with the assistant or client, the mm -hmm. people. So that which is very different, I think. Yeah. I don't know, it, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have so that in common, like, I mean, liking systems. I, I also am obsessed with systems, but uh, it, it's funny how, the, the meditative and the system seem to be separate, but I do feel like you you combine them because um, ceramics is still systematic. I mean, there's a lot of science that goes into it, um, and I'm I, just looking at your work and knowing that you studied architecture, which I also did. Um, I I can really feel the structure and the volume. Uh, aspect of architecture so much in your work whereas like I actually did really poorly in architecture school um, because I was so focused on the cladding of the buildings I only cared about the surface um, well, that's interesting I still operate that way uh, but that can be equally systematic so um, yeah oh, that's interesting and so and I know Simon, you guys are also in the midst of, of moving your studios. Uh, just before this pandemic happened, you guys were like in the process of moving, right? Or you're in the process of moving. Yeah, we were supposed to move out mid-April and we didn't. So <laughs> now we're, uh, we'll, we'll be in a new studio in July. And I'm so excited about getting to build it. Lee, looking at your studio, I'm, I'm really jealous. It's so beautiful. Ours is like oh. a... I mean, this is like, I, that's how I operate, but it's a mess in here. And yours is really immaculate. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. But I mean, I visited, a few years before I visited your studio, I mean, it was, it was amazing. I mean, just, uh, I mean, I was impressed because uh, you guys uh, have, a, you guys are using the many material, even just uh, music or so. So I think uh, that is, uh, I mean, for me, just a, uh, journey the word journey is very important part the why the journey is important is this when i make a ceramic i mean i i feel like i'm in home and the, sometimes i use the other method is kinds of traveling but the other i mean different way of thinking different making process but when when i saw your studio there are many like method of journey like different material using and even this uh, music studio. So I, I mean, this I was really impressed. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about uh, ceramics specifically. So Simon, you mentioned science as being an interest of yours. Um, and obviously I think that your obsession with science and systems had led you into ceramics. I know when we first met, um, you were maybe just starting or had really done very little in ceramics. Um, but intuitively, you kind of uncovered or discovered or, or invented in a way a little bit of a your own process of making this sort of accretion series, which you know, you the Haas had become sort of famous for and you're still making uh, versions of today. So um, I think be interesting to hear from you like a little bit about just what it is for ceramics that um, you find interesting and why uh, it as a material offers opportunities maybe that other materials might not or um, and also how you see it playing um, you know the role it plays today in the, in the kind of fine arts and craft and, and design world. Yeah uh, for me ceramics is one of the the essential building materials. Um, it's, I think, one of the most important crafts. And I, 
I've always had an appreciation for it because without it, we, we might have had a harder time evolving. It, it's been used to store food and water and carry water from one place to another. Um, and so it's it along with basket weaving are two crafts that I think of as like essential to being a human. And so I've had that appreciation for it um, always, but I also like any material that will go through a transformation. So uh, concrete, which Lee also uses, ceramics and glass are all really exciting to me because they have to go through something to get where they're where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but ceramics just being mud is kind of how I looked at it at first. Uh, and and I'm really interested in geological processes and uh, geology and, and biology, but more just how erosion happens and how building happens in nature. So um, like, how does a mountain get made or uh, why does a cave happen? And it's just something is happening over and over and over that um, in the same way and that builds something. And that's what I'm the most excited about. And I think that's how I approached ceramics was this is mud and can I use it kind of like a cave? Uh, and and that's what I, that's, that's how we came up with accretion in the first place was, can I be the process that builds a cave? Well, and, and then another thing that, of course, you guys added to that conversation was this sense of humor or, um, you know, kind of playing off the, the, the sort of gender of the objects themselves, as you can see clearly the image on the top right here, which is, um, you know, one of the accretions. I don't know if I can, you guys can see that. And, and then, um, so Lee, in a similar way, you're uh, a very different way you use ceramics, but in, you know, ceramics is such a traditional material, um, you know, associated with craft and centuries of making millennial of ceramics being made but you have taken it to an interesting place where it becomes more architectural in scale and, and kind of girth in a way. But also you have this very painterly approach, which I think that's what I find most beautiful about your work is the, 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 the works themselves in the end look like paintings to me, like three dimensional paintings. I don't know if we have a slide of one of the um, stools for instance, but these are, are, are something that I've always been fascinated by. And so tell us a little bit about your process, because I think a lot of it is traditional in terms of glazing, but maybe not. Well, this, I was influenced by my ancestors. As you know, we, Korea has a very strong and powerful tradition about ceramic. Hmm. And they just, my ancestors made a beautiful, beautiful ceramic tradition but sometimes uh, it doesn't help for my creativity because sometimes it is big burden. Sometimes it's really hard to climb up, climb the, I, I feel a huge wall, so I cannot, it's sometimes it bothers me, but yeah. that's just, I mean, that when I see like a Simon's work and it's, uh, I feel, I can feel huge freedom and um, because uh, it's more like a light, but something. But I just still have, a, I still, I, my work is still influenced by Puncheong ware, which is done in the Joseon dynasty. So white sleep on it, on the very dark clay. So which is basically my technique. Mm. But uh, I always try to go beyond the tradition. So, what I, what I, when I just, uh, when I, but I mean, this is my essence, Pun Chong Wei is very controlled, but I, I try not to, for my work, I mean, this, for example, when I glaze and I fire, I, I, I cannot see the actual like color when I glaze. So I like to enjoy the process of uh, like applying the glaze. And then when I fire, I, I really enjoy the waiting time. So sometimes I don't, I try not to control the firing. I try to control some percentage and I just, uh, I really enjoy and the expectation. So sometimes when I apply the same glaze, 
sometimes its colors I expect like blue, sometimes its colors turns out like purple or red. Mm. So always different color. That's what I like. That's what I like from ceramic, which is totally different with painting. Yeah, so right. actually I just, uh, sometimes I just, uh, my works are broken or cracked, but I try to accept that kinds of accidents. So mm -hmm. reassemble that works. So I like the process of, that's like part of nature. I think that yeah. in clay, it is shrink, shrink, shrinking and some crack and it's, mm -hmm. the, the shape is changes. Sometimes some ceramic artists, they try to control that. But mm -hmm. for me, I, I just try to accept that kind of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, b both of you, I think, are very much about the process. This is a beautiful example of the, the two. Uh, so the Haas brothers' uh, accretion, feather accretion on the right, and uh, Hun Chung Lee's uh, ceramic stool on the left. Um, but the textures and the, the, the tech you know, the, the, the feelings that these works uh, exude are extraordinary. Um, and uh, it's also the opposite in a way of one being incredibly delicate, the, the Haas accretions, uh, and, and then yours is this very solid thing, but yet they both have this very light, very playful, very like energetic, um, you know, feeling to them. So, <clears throat> Let's move on then to the next, uh, let's see what we have coming up next. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, environments. And um, so this is an environment that, that Lee created, a, 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 an interior, a room in a way, um, completely out of ceramic. And I remember when we first, you first started to talk about this with us, this idea of creating, funny enough, a cave kind of thing where you mm -hmm. had lights, built into the walls and the ceiling and you had to enter into a, like a whole nother world. And um, I believe this was a commission for a, a, a green air or something like that in Korea. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, about this idea of the, the environment. This is again, something, another link I made between the two of you and both of you have done these kinds of whole environments. And again, something that, most people, uh, you know, haven't really been able to achieve this kind of whole full scale. Um, it's very brave and it's also very exciting and, and something I think a lot of people dream about. I know I do. <laughs> I mean, just to, how I got this idea was a uh, few years before when I had a show at the Art and Company I made wall chair, maybe you remember. Yeah. And then, so when I made the, the wall chair piece, that was a quite big challenge for me. And I wanted to make a whole room out of ceramics. So that's at the time that I, I got this idea. Um, making a big installation or, or this big like a sculpture out of ceramic is a challenge and attempt for ceramic art, all the ceramic artists. I mean, re always research about the material and techniques. So always try to make big, big ones. And then I just like to explore the limitation of the material and technique. Uh, so it was a quite, quite complex, a very complicated process for me. And then, but because uh, as you know, the ceramic <coughs> is shrinking, so it's kind of hard to calculate the shooting case and then I mean just for me making a whole room out of ceramic was um, I mean very enjoyable and a big challenge time yeah so I really enjoyed the process and I just uh, I just like to I mean just, this is my favorite piece actually yeah it's so beautiful thank you I Simon <laughs> And it's, 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 I mean, that's what you were saying about it's, this is so technical, but anyone who's, who's in it won't understand that. They'll just feel your, your love for, for the material. And uh, I think that that's, that's what you get across so beautifully is, is this sort of 
um there's almost something spiritual in ceramic like you were saying you have to like just let go and let it do its thing and i feel like this is a an altar to ceramics and it's really really special i want to go in there <laughs> thank you so much i mean this room is uh i was what i was wondering i was thinking about when i just uh, when i fired this piece after i just uh, get dry i mean made and I was thinking about uh, only using the white color or just uh, like uh, or just uh, so many colors, but I just choose the second one. I just uh, try to use a lot of colors. But it could be very confusing, but I mean, I did, but uh, it was, uh, I liked uh, a lot of colors in the room. Yeah, so. And when I, when I, sometimes I go into the room and feel very meditative and uh, I, when I go there, I feel the whole process, how difficult it was and how, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, did we lose Evan? We did, we can sorry. keep, oh, there he is. Uh, sorry guys. No, don't worry. <laughs> Back. Okay, sorry. Technical difficulties. Uh, I missed a little bit of that conversation, but I'm back. Woof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were all talking environment. So I guess, um, anyway, let's, should we move on to the next slide? <laughs> so, <laughs> here we have um, the advocate for the sexual outsider, if I'm remembering the title correctly. Um, this was an installation we did in Basel. Um, several years ago uh, with the Haas brothers. And this was an interesting um, sort of turning point. I, I thought this was important to, to speak about because it was really a, a turning point in, in, in your careers, I think. This, this sort of changed the way people really looked at the Haas brothers and, and really put in people's face this sort of like discussion around gender and sexuality and things that people were sort of somewhat, you know, afraid to talk about in public and maybe even more so in the design world. Um, but again, the idea of creating an environment to create dialogue and interaction with the people, which maybe I missed that in your talk, Lee, but what I love about the environment is that, you know, you have to interact with it. Uh, and that's a really important part of design in general is that you interact with design objects. So I think environmental uh, studies are really interesting in that way. So Simon, tell us a little bit about this piece. <laughs> and so this, I mean, even when I look at it now, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe we made that. Uh, it is, it's pretty wild. Um, but I you know we really do love, um, Nikki and I are both big film fans. And one of the things that I like about movies is that when you're watching them, you wind up Kind of inside of the movie and that's the same sort of thing we like about doing a full environment is that you get to you get transported into a different headspace and you know in this piece we were just sort of inviting people to come in and um think about what design what design is and we we approached it through the lens of sexuality um, because there are less so now, but there are pretty strict rules about what a gender is and what sexuality is supposed to be like. And in the same way, we felt like there are really strict rules, um, or there were, about what is art, what is design. Um, and part of this is that we, we wanted to uh, include sex toys because they are, um, they actually do have a function, they have a, d a definite function. Um, but it's not one that you would really consider like part of design. So really the point of this was to um, make people ask questions. And uh, I, think we, I think we did that. I think we did that. And then maybe consider what they were feeling when they're inside. Because I remember people going in and if they were with people, they'd be embarrassed. But if they were alone, I think they had more fun and then they would... <clears throat> came out like frowning and some people came out laughing uh yeah. so it was, it it was kind of, a, yeah. yeah 
motion, which was a, is really hard to do. Yeah. In a way, uh, like a physical reaction in a way. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I, I love this piece. <laughs> There's a big, huge sense of humor. That's one of the reasons why I love this piece. And also, I mean, so when I see this piece, I was curious about the, when I saw this piece in the first time. This is a design work or fine arts. That was uh, because it, it gives to the audience big, big curious thing. And I think uh, in these days, uh, these days, the, the value is created in between something and something. And this is, I think uh, this is between fine art and design in the border, uh, which is, uh, which is, I love. Yeah. So people, there is a space people think of, yeah, about it. So that's yeah. what I like. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate the same thing. And I, sometimes I'll say, uh, right. I think about it in terms of, if you think about the globe and you're, you're making it, uh, like a one or the other situation, you could say, oh, it's the North Pole and the South Pole, and that's it. Or it's everything in between, which is actually all of the really interesting stuff. Uh, and I feel like I feel like you operate in the same space, Lee, uh, because when I see your, your uh, if it's furniture, it feels very much like it's adding something extra to the space. It's not a function. Um, it's not purely functional. It is giving me an emotion um, and a, a desire to connect with the piece, and that that does bring it closer to fine art, and um, and that's where you know you have to really consider it. If it's a design object, but it's very close to art, it makes you think a whole lot more. And I think that that is um, that's what draws somebody in, and, and that's what's special about what we do. Yeah, I love that idea. I mean, just so. I just actually, I just, uh, when I show my, some of my, for example, when I show my stool, I hope the people, peop, I, I, I hope I, I give some kinds of space for the audience so people can decide something. So I just, uh, I offer them like 70% of my work, the rest of those 30%, the audience dis make decision. So mm -hmm. for example, when I, one one client bought one of my stool, like higher stool. So I just designed that as a stool, but she was using that as a sushi platter. <laughs> so they, they just they create they create a new function. So that's what I like. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We we always say uh, you know in the end it's up to the the client or the collector to decide what they want to call it if it is a a work of art or an object of design in the end that's just a label um, it's really up to the person to decide what it is um, as long as you make what you want to make and you guys all make beautiful things um, then it, it's a really uh, it's an interesting and endless conversation actually which is a and 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 we as a gallery we exist in this in between like you were saying and that's for us that's exciting um, I thought when I saw these two slides next to one another, it blew my mind a little bit because I felt like this is such an interest, I, you know, such an interesting conversation going on between this group of pieces, um, these kind of otherworldly animated objects in completely different materials and techniques, but yet there's this really beautiful symbiotic uh, thing happening. So. We're, you know, furniture is something that, that both of you guys have made um, throughout your careers. And it's something that um, I find really interesting because again, it is that, that idea where you can make an object, uh, a functional object as sculptural and as unique as you uh, envision. And that functionality becomes almost sort of like in question. Uh, even though it's still clearly you can sit on that um, if you want, it may or may not be terribly comfortable, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <you're not. laughs> 
probably not. <laughs> um, you know, that was, this was a question I wanted to ask you both was, you know, we discussed some of your, you know, um, when you, when you talk about design and, and how uh, the term or if the term is relevant when you're making a functional object. Here she goes. <laughs> is is the fun is the functionality uh, like a you know when you're thinking about making an object does that come into play with your thinking i mean i mean for me yes i think it's important um and it, it's i like constraints like that i mean design is about certain constraints and you have to meet uh you have to meet like a specific um requirement in order for it to achieve something but like what happens when you only just barely meet that requirement, um, which is kind of how, how we do it. But I think design is really, really important. I mean, I was saying that about ceramics uh, being vessels. It, to me, it's almost, um, it's almost more interesting to add some constraints or a, um, to add the intention of a person really interacting with the piece. And so we bring that in a whole lot. And I like if I like if something we make can be called fine art, but you are still supposed to sit on it, um, because there's a there's a barrier with fine art that you're not allowed to touch it, and I don't love that. And there's a barrier with uh, design a lot of the time where it it has to be really really functional or lightweight or um, or efficient, and uh, I taking both of those things is, is so much more fun. Yeah. For me, just the relationship I already have, like with chairs that I have in my own house mm -hmm. and you know, which one I like to sit on. I do, I develop relationships with furniture objects uh, more than I do with the art that I have in my house. And I think amplifying that relationship is, is exciting for me and Nikki too. Like if we make it kind of cute and funny, will you have more of a relationship with it? Uh, and maybe that's actually more important than whether it's comfortable or not. I think so. Yeah, I think that the, you're, you, you, you nailed it exactly. And I, you know, we, we always are encouraging people to touch things and experience things. And, and you do have a different relationship with the design objects or the objects that you, that you sit on, you interact with. Um, so why not make them just as beautiful as the things on the wall? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very amazing thing. Here's a beautiful example of uh, a set of Lee uh, Hun Chung's uh, furniture. These are fantastic and the, the color, the beautiful, the scale of them also. Um, so here you have a, a mix of, the table is also concrete, right? The top? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. um, I mean, just for me, for me, it's making furniture is uh, very, 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 very interesting process for me. I mean, I just uh, started to make a furniture when I had, uh, maybe it was uh, almost uh, 15 years before. I mean, uh, when I had a show in Somi, when I work, started to work with the PJ Park, that, that's how I started to make a furniture. But before this, I just for me making ceramic was making some ceramic sculpture or vessel. That was it. And also, I just uh, at the time I was making installation out of the other materials, but making arts. But I mean, when I made the installation, I use I used some kinds of furniture images a lot. But when I when I made the installation out of furniture images, people thought it was. But they asked me a very serious question about what, what meaning it has, something like that. But it didn't have a meaning. It, it was like a play for like insulation. Mm -hmm. but, but when I make a furniture, same, same shape, people are more close by, more friendly, but be, because they, they use furniture a lot. But I mean, just for me, making furniture these days, for me, making furniture is um, about balancing. I, I try not to make very convenient. I try not to make very sculptural. I like to, I hope my functions are balanced between something and something. So as, as Simon said, I hope my function is 
playful. When people use that, it's more like playful, not, not, that's not about more convenience, more like artistic playful. I hope I like to make more playful or like uh, artistic object it can be. It can be some functional, functional, yeah, objects. I hope it exists between yeah, something and something. That's what I like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a this is an interesting piece that you you made. Uh, we exhibited this, I think, in two thousand sixteen, maybe at the gallery. Mm -hmm. So this was a sort of a, like a, a non functional dinner set mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This is one sculpture. Um, it is symbolically is a dining table, but which is not useful. <laughs> so. Yeah. It was uh, the the title was uh, dinner party, and uh, I wanted to when I made design this work, I wanted to make like a table and uh, tableware out of a whole whole set out of ceramic, and uh, which is uh, which is funk symbolically, which it, is a dining table and. Uh, Dining, dining rare, but it is a sculpture. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, that's what I did. Um, I think on the next slide we have an image of um, some new ceramics that that Simon and uh, the Haas have been working on. Um, so this is again functional, um, going back to in a way creating a a, a series of functional works, um, but applying this technique that you've been working on over the last couple of years, um, this sort of handmade drawing technique, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, about this and where this is going. Yeah, uh, so this is us using um, much more traditional ceramics forms, obviously, just sort of as a canvas for um, these emergent patterns that I am obsessed with. So this started with, with beadwork. I mean, you can see all this stuff behind me is like a similar process uh, where I'll write like a rule or, yeah, I write a rule for how something is built. Uh, and in this case, it's about tracing circles with slip and then putting little notches every once in a while. Um, and the rule generates a pattern. And that's, that's what this is about, and and it's a it's a kind of a cold system if you think about it or if it's written on paper, but when it comes out, it has this almost magical quality, and um, there's there's something mesmerizing to me at least about seeing a pattern come out um, that I wasn't really intending to draw. I was just following rules, uh, so that's what that's what this series is. Right, it's creating almost that that pattern that nature would might might follow to to grow a new ring around a tree or a new branch, right? Yeah, exactly. It's it's it's, um, it's like an extension of it's related to accretion because accretion is a a rules thing. You know, like I have like it's really just I have a piece of it here. It's really just about brushing in a specific way over and over and repeated, but in this case. We're doing it two dimensionally. And instead of just a brush going from bottom to top, um, there's a few rules about when do you draw an extra little notch and then how many times do you trace it? Um, and that's what that is. And I, I, think, I think the patterns that come out of it are pretty cool. Yeah. So this is just the beginning. So we'll hopefully see more of that coming. I wish we had more slides. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's another interesting um, relationship that I, I wanted to just make is that, you know, both of you have made uh, lighting in a very non-traditional kind of way. Um, and the image on the left, which is the Haas, um, this was an interesting series. Only a few of these were ever really made, but it was an interesting s material study, I thought, just in developing uh, a similar approach to the accretion, but in using a completely different material. Yeah, it's um, yeah. With acrylic paint, so same exact process, but with paint. Right. 
Um, but then you actually applied um, glass beads to the surface in the end, which are the beads used in, in street uh, painting for, for like road signs and things, right? Which reflective. Yeah, we, found, we found the reflective beads. Uh, and this for me, again, it's more just a fascination with, with nature shapes, but the more spherical a piece of glass gets, the more it bounces light back at you. And so we found these very, very spherical beads uh, and they, they put them on runways uh, to create reflections so that when pilots are landing, they can see the strip. Um, and I, I just really wanted to use them. And uh, they, they react to light more than they generate light. So that was kind of where I was coming from there. Yeah, and Lee, I know you've made a, few, a, a bit of lighting yourself. And I mean, lighting is something that we love. Uh, I love to, uh, the artists, seeing, seeing the creations in, in light in lighting because it's such a unique approach to a design object. The, the lamp seems to have a lot of possibilities, let's say, um, in becoming more of a sculpture than almost anything else. Um, so Lee, have you made much lighting or do you, I, I know we have this beautiful image on the, on the right. Can you tell us a little bit about that or if? Yeah, lighting, making lighting is, uh, I, these days, uh, I, I, I miss a few years before I have made, uh, yeah, several lightings, but not these days. And the lighting is, uh, making lighting is very, very like new attempt for me, I mean, ceramic, Ceramic is very solid material, mm. and then light and wind or like water, the kinds of material is more like organic and um, different different feeling from the ceramic. So combine combining the light and ceramic, combining like a ceramic with the uh, water, the kinds of uh, the kinds of like combination, which I like, sometimes I like to use uh, the kinds of material. So different, ceramic is more like solid and very concrete feeling, but the uh, light is more quite, quite different feeling from ceramic. So I like to combine the kinds of combination. So which is very yeah. Uh, fascinating, yeah. yeah, trying for me. Yeah. Okay, so and now- the, <laughs> this, uh, bathtub. <laughs> it, this is a, a bathtub and sink in the in Seoul. Um, and if we go one more slide, I think we have. Okay, so here this was an, a, another interesting connection that I uh, kind of rediscovered. I, you know, of course, both of you have made extraordinary bathtubs and. <laughs> Not something that everyone, uh, you know, would consider making as a as an object. Um, yet you both have done so successfully, um, and um, you know this whole idea. It's a kind of like the ultimate design object in a way. If you want to talk about sensory and feeling and emotion and all of these sorts of things, um, and uh, the whole idea of like the spa and you know, which is which is such an incredible, uh, you know, feeling. Um, so Lee, tell us about your, your tub you have here on the left. I know you've made a, a few of them. Um, what inspired yeah. you to make a bathtub in the first place? Mm -hmm. I mean, the first, uh, first slide of the, the blue, blue bathtub is in, at my home, actually. Mm -hmm. So I use the bathtub and the sink also, but that's my home. And I like to, I like, I mean, the very kinds of cheap items like a sink, bathtub, or like a planter. When people think of the kinds of items, which is, which, which is cheap, but I mean, so I like to, I like to recreate the kinds of cheap item, like a more like higher value. So when, when artists touch, hand is touch it in the cheap items artist artistic way it can be it can be like it can have a new value i think that's about art it doesn't matter this is this is a 
like uh, this is furniture or like a cheap items mm -hmm. or whatever i mean it's, uh, it can be it can be like high high level art so so right. sometimes i i just choose those very cheap items so we create yeah we create that mm -hmm. so that's how i started to make a bathtub and yeah in a way, we kind of, we kind of take those those items for granted, don't we? In in the the bathroom, the toilet, mm. and the sink, and the, the bathtub, we don't think about them when we're thinking about the home. It's like, oh, you go buy that one from the from the bath store. You know, you don't think about it like we do furniture. But in the end, it is actually it's furniture. Simon, tell us about the tub that you and Nikki made. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was. Like, like you were saying, we don't really consider these items all that often, but um, you do interact with them every day without fail. And so I think it is a, a good place to focus some attention. Um, you know, Nikki and I, our dad's German, and we went to Germany a whole lot as kids, and there's a very strong spa culture. And I, I know in Korea, there's a strong spa culture too, so maybe we both appreciate bathtubs more than, than some people do. But I love baths, and um, again, it's just about creating an experience for somebody. Um, and a bad bathtub is so bad, and a good bathtub is so awesome, uh, and really can make the difference between you getting out of the bath and feeling relaxed or like kind of annoyed. And so, for me uh, and Nikki, I think we wanted to have the bathtub just be an experience. And I like the photo of the person's hand on that knob because it is about like when you're in there, you, you're supposed to be feeling those knobs. Yeah. Uh, and just, it's a, it's a sensual solo experience was the idea. Yeah, and you're as close to that object as you can be to an object, right? You're, you're nude, you're physically like, you know, touching it your entire body. So it's a, it's a really interesting concept to, uh, for people to reconsider in a way. Yeah, so it's an intimate design piece. Yeah, um, that's great. I think we're almost through our, our slides. Um, we have maybe one more or, oh, no, a couple more. This is an amazing installation uh, in Seoul um, that I just wanted everyone to see. Um, the, um, the stools, a lot of the stools that you make do end up uh, being able to exist outdoors and this sort of inside, outside, indoor, outdoor living, which is very prominent in, in California. Uh, uh, and But I just wanted people to see this. Some of these works in situ. Um, I don't know if you have anything to you know talk about this, but just seeing the stools, and I know both, both of you have made lots of stools. I, here's another, oh, here's a Haas uh, commission that we did um, in Miami. This, these are stone benches, which are fantastic, the elephant bench. Um, so again, I wanted just people to see these things and, and understand that they can exist in the world and, in, and enhance your world, like inside, outside. Um, I think we have a couple of larger scale. Uh, and then here's a large outdoor sculpture um, by the Haas brothers, um, which is at the Aventura Mall. Um, you wanna talk about this a little bit, Simon? We'll, yeah, uh, I mean, this was just to encourage kids to play. And um, I, I think in a public space, that's a nice thing to have. It's for, for kids to run around in the water. Um, uh, when Nikki and I were growing up, it was really hot. And we grew up in Texas, and it was very hot. And uh, so we would, like, hop into public fountains all the time. Uh, and we just wanted to make that happen. So. Uh, we made a public fountain that's actually supposed to be gotten into. Yeah. Um, and then this is an installation in Portugal, Lee, of yours, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, the, the left, the, the I mean, image of the left side is in Korea, some like golf country club. And the right side one is, uh, which I made in Portugal, Azores Island. Yeah. So the right side one is, uh, I mean, is on the hill of the island, Sao Miguel, which I did uh, last year. That is, um, 
actually I made the uh, chair images sculpture, but which is uh, like five five meters one long, which is a really really big one. So it it is functional object, but it cannot be useful. And uh, which is um, which was uh, like a monument sculpture. So I go there every year. So it there are nine islands. And uh, I, every year I go there, so each island, I make a new project. That's my plan. But this year I was going to go. Actually, May 15th, my plan was going there, but I canceled. I couldn't go because of the virus situation. So maybe next year yeah. I, will, I will go. Yeah. Well, um, amazing talk, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's open it up to some questions. If anyone has any questions. Um, let us know. Um, this has been a great discussion. And also, um, PJ, I wanted to thank you so much for taking part in this. PJ is uh, our friend who we've worked with for many years and, and worked with Han Chang Lee and a lot of the Korean artists. Um, so uh, one of uh, our great friends and partners in, in a lot of uh, the Korean design has helped put Korean design on the map. So thank you, PJ, uh, for that. So. Um, uh, we have a couple questions here. Let's see here from uh, Sean Kelly. Um, let's see, common, uh, or sorry, from Brian Wright. Uh, how do you feel about the process of making something through Blender versus making something with an actual material? Hmm. Not sure what that means. That's, how does this affect yeah. your creative process and what are the ways in which it might invite mm -hmm. something different? So I, I think that's for me because I use Blender with the, the 3D program. Oh. Uh, um, and I, I never really used it that much until we went into quarantine. And now it's my primary making stuff. Um, and I mean, the difference between them is that Blender is an, an image maker and it's not a, a, a true physical object. So something like these, like the ceramic process, could never happen with Blender because my process of making is about observing what's happening to a material as I as I use it. Um, but at the same time, I love making pictures, and it's a really great way for um, me and Nikki to collaborate without being in the same room because we can uh, we can sort of dream something up and just see it really quickly. Um, so I'm I am enjoying using a 3D program. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Christian Larson, our friend Christian Larson, who we all uh, know, hey Christian, um, <laughs> says thank you for this uh, thoughtful discussion. He's wondering if um, both of you uh, are interested in making more work that's more price accessible. Obviously, we know Simon and Nikki have done the project with Leo J, um, which has opened up you know, the opportunity for people to acquire your work at a less exp expensive price point. Um, he's wondering, Lee, if you also make uh, more accessible work, and I believe you do. Um, maybe you guys can answer that quickly. Um, I'm then. Lee? Uh, yeah. You? I mean, actually, I, I have two systems in Korea. So actually, I just I make my own artwork, unique work, and also I I have another like uh, another studio name, Bada Design and Atelier, which is uh, when I when I make uh, one unique piece, and if that the, that is uh, like my unique artwork, which is quite uh, high price, and sometimes uh, I was. I was ordered a commission from some companies or hotels, something like that. Sometimes they ask me to make the same shape, the, mm. the unique piece, like a, like a print, like a ten or twenty, sometimes one hundred pieces. Mm. I just I don't I don't sign the piece. I stamp Bada Design and Atelier, so maybe bring down the price because that cannot be my unique piece. So the price is more lower, but. I think uh, my unique piece is uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Simon, you want to? You... Well, because uh, I have two systems, Hanchong Lee Studio and the Bada Design and Atelier. This is a Bada Design and Atelier is not, is uh, like, a, like a more productive brand. Yeah. So when I make one piece of art and so. Yeah, it makes, uh, I understand. Um, yeah, Simon, I mean, <laughs> what, Simon, so when I'm, for example, when I make one piece of art, like a mall, yeah. it, it can be like a 200 US dollars, something like that, when it is a unique piece. Sometimes some of my clients, they ask me to order me like 100 pieces of the same one. So it cannot be like artwork. It yeah. is like, a, this is like, a, like a print. So I don't, I don't sign my name on it. I bring it to, yeah. yeah. You get it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Simon? Yeah, uh, I mean, we have done, uh, with Lobje, we did do a, a more consumer, um, consumer line. And for me, it's just as exciting because it has its own set of constraints and, you know, you have to make it so that it can be molded and it's the same thing every time. And that's, that's actually really fun for me. Um, but also just, I think Nikki and I both want our work to be in as many people's houses as possible so that they can all enjoy it. And that it, it was important for us to make, um, make things that more people can have because our other stuff is pretty difficult to get. I mean, it all takes a long time and it's, like hard to find so this was it was fun for us and i see our i see our love jay pieces in more people's houses uh than a lot of our other stuff and it's it's always like exciting for me to come across one yeah i've, I've come across it in people's homes that i never would have expected um <laughs> and randomly that don't know any you know that i have any even connection with uh you guys and i, I always find that that interesting uh, so it has reached a, a much wider audience, which is which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's one other question from Jose Rodriguez for Simon. It says, any particular film trends, people, or styles that influence your work? Um, I mean, people who influence my work, I talk about this guy a lot, but his name is Douglas Hofstadter, and he's a writer, and he's actually, or no, he's a he's a a logician and a philosopher, kind of and he's working on artificial intelligence. So that's, I, I'm just like obsessed with him. Um, but beyond that, not that much. I think he's probably my biggest uh, current influence. Yeah. Um, how about you, Han Chung? Any, any uh, influences on your work that you would mention or films or connections to styles or things like that? Film, I don't, I don't know from the film I got influenced, but I just, uh, I was um, really influenced by actually, you know, just why I went to San Francisco to study when I was studying like a ceramic when I, in Korea, in the B, BFA program, I mean, as I, I, I told you about the I mean, ceramic tradition, Korean ceramic tradition was really, really heavy for me. So I wanted to come out from there. So uh, at the time I was really into funk art movement in, in Bay Area. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, I wanted to be hippie. <laughs> I mean, the, the 60s, 1960s, there was funk art movement in Bay Area. I was, that, that movement was really influenced by for me, so that was how I started to make a sculpture ceramic. That was really influenced, yeah, for me. Mm. Oh. Um, Victoria uh, Kristen says, hello, Han Chung Lee. When are you coming back to Portland, Oregon? Um, mm. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, um, another question from Luba Liver. Barakan, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Do you both create small prototypes before every large scale installation? Um, yeah, uh, we we definitely do. Yeah, uh, and I have, you know, I make I make lots and lots and lots of material samples, and they're just kind of all lying around. I mean, these are some 
right here I have like little prototype bead things uh, and they wind up becoming a, a bigger object. But I think it's really helpful to feel the space and uh, make a make a maquette. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. mm. well, for I think just when I for me just to, when I when I design or make a plan some of some projects, I I rather make a small object more than drawing. Making drawing is different feeling. So I like to touch clay when I design. So I mean that's very important parts. Mm. Yeah, so feeling feeling clay is or or just um, making drawing is quite different. So when I just uh, make plan to make a big piece of ceramic, I try to use my hand to to feel the clay. So that's why I make a small models when I design. You know, Han um, Jong Lee. Um, just to add on top of that, um, I remember many years ago. You know, he had a commission, and then I asked him to um, if he had um, um, if he could provide a sketch, you know, um, for the um, um, client's review and conf confirmation. Um, I was very, very pleasantly shocked because he came back not with a sketch actually, but I still have it. I don't know if you can see it. It's um, a little ceramic, you know, model, maquette, or, you know, miniature, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. I mean, this is like, you know, I, I got this for, by, by FedEx, and then um, I obviously ended up not sending it to the client. I kept it myself. Um, so you know, for me, as you as you mentioned, you know, um, just drawing it out or using some sort of a um, um, technical device um, does not really um, get the feeling and a sense of uh, of his inspiration whether he, he, he likes to touch really even the miniature and then uh, I know you cannot see it, but you know, even on the miniatures, he would glaze and they use the same technique that he would use in actual, um, his work. Um, and then is that again, the whole process starting from the uh, maquette uh, to the end, you know, work that um, he really um, appreciates. Yeah. Yeah, we, lo we love seeing the models of, uh things it's, it's always an exciting study interesting study of things um well i think we're gonna leave it there we uh, i have two more questions <laughs> would uh georgia duncan would you ever consider collaborations i know uh simon you guys have done a few collaborations uh lee have you ever collaborated with other uh, artists or do you see collaborations as something that's interesting for you well, I love to do the collaboration with Haas Brothers. That's my dream. <laughs> Let's make that happen. Be someone. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there's a chance Lee might be spending some time in LA soon. So uh, maybe we'll be able to, to get you guys together. Yeah, then let's yeah, go. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I would like to just say thank you guys very much for your time today. This has been really fun. Um, thank you, PJ, and thank you, everyone um, at our company for helping put this together. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys all soon in the real world. Yeah, I hope. All right. Well, thank goodbye, and thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.